Matt was eating pizza five days per week. Before COVID and kids, he was very active, but he had fallen off his routine and did just enough to say he was working out, but not enough to see any real progress. When he started, he struggled to do sit-ups, but the one major advantage he had was his focus and dedication. As a 37-year-old business owner, he decided to reorient his life around taking care of his health and spending more time with his family. In today's video, you'll find out what is possible when you decide to go all in for eight months, what you have to give up in order to get in shape fast, and the most important decision you have to make when you get started. But first, I wanted to know this. You've made just tremendous progress since you, you started here. We have like a whole list of things <laughs> that, uh, that you've done. But what, what kind of spurred you to you know, seek us out? What, what kind of goal were you trying to achieve when you started? Uh, okay. Well, I've had like two periods of like fitness in my life and two down cycles as well. Um, like right after I graduated college, I took some time off unintentionally and like got a little bit chunky and didn't work out so much. And then when I met my wife, we had like a period of like fitness again and like running and I was in like pretty good shape. And then it was, when we, there was a couple of things that happened as I got promoted, I started managing big projects and I was just like working more. And then we also bought a house. And when we bought the house, I thought this is going to be like the greatest thing ever. I have a whole basement. I'm going to build out a home gym and I'm going to get like shredded. Yeah. And the opposite actually happened. <laughs> um, like I had more access to fitness equipment than ever, but like I just didn't use it. You built the home gym. Yeah. But... And it was weird because like I'm somebody who, when we were gym members, we would go like every day Yeah. Um, at other parts in our lives. Um, and like we did it basically a year before the pandemic hit. So we had literally had like perfect setting for everything. Mm, yeah. And for whatever reason, like I don't know if it was, it was mostly probably kids were... I was going to say, was this the yeah. pandemic? Yeah, kids. It was like, the like a one-year-old. <laughs> the perfect storm for just like not using any of the equipment in my gym. Yeah, um, yeah. And then I was kind of joking that like four or five years... Yeah, it was like about three years ago, I think. I was at um, Kensington Park and I met Rebecca. Um, maybe it was sooner than that, but she handed me her business card and it had been sitting on my desk for a long time. And then that home gym that I wasn't using at all flooded... Mm. So it was like, well, maybe this is the universe telling me something. Um, Knock, it knocked, so off, like, knocked off the dust of yeah. the, off the oh, whole gym. Oh, man. Well, then you had a swimming <laughs> yeah. pool, so yeah. it was fine. So that was like what like kicked me in the, in the pants and got me moving again. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Was it nature telling you maybe you should use this thing or I'm going to take it back? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> So th so this happened like in 2022? This was this point? past January. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, so and then I joined in February. Yeah. Got it, okay. So it was like I was looking around. I was looking at different CrossFit gyms. I was like, should I just do a... Because there was a regular 24-hour fitness just down the road from us um, that we were members at before we had our home gym. Very nice gym. And I was like, should I just do this again? Or like... I've been so lazy. Maybe I finally need to like bite mm. the bullet and like hire a personal trainer. Yeah. Um, or like I've been teetering around the idea of like doing CrossFit for a while. Maybe it's finally time since I'm so young now that I should start doing CrossFit. Um, <laughs> so I, then I looked at like CrossFit gyms and um, yeah, and I just was like, oh wait, I have this card. I guess it's a CrossFit gym of some sort. I don't know. They, um, and then I found you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So you hadn't been doing much or had you been training at all? Like, well, you know, my squat rack is configured as basically a bench press. So like I frequently would go over there and like rep out like 135, 10 times and then like <laughs> maybe do a second set. <laughs> and then I would be done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's and, great. Um, and I, and I just like run out of steam or motivation or something. Yeah. Um, and, but we did have a Peloton. We did join the fad of getting a Peloton like everyone else. And um, I think I kept my heart at least and my cardio in like pretty good shape during the pandemic by like by using a Peloton. Yeah. Um, but while, it, while it's good cardio, it's nothing like the stress you put on your body from like running, which is what I was the most used to and yeah. the, the, what I've done prior to you know being out of shape um, and, and used to be used to be a cross-country runner yes i was a cross-country runner in high school yeah. um when i was literally 100 pounds lighter mm -hmm. and then i went from like 2011 to 2000 i don't know 2018 19 i ran quite a bit too 
Um, yeah. My wife and I ran. We did two marathons and quite a few 5Ks in there. Wow. Um, yeah. Right. And then just like everyone else, you had kids. You yeah. also got hit with the double whammy of the pandemic. Yeah. And the routine just sort of started to fall off. Yep. That's right. The wheels just completely fell off. And yeah. after a while, after they fall off, you're just kind of like, well, it's, it's hard to get them back on. You know? Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't really want to. Yeah. 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 And, and so kind of, kind of going through that, you're never missing bench day and you do Peloton every so often, yeah. <laughs> but what was your goal? Oh, when you would you... have been terrifying on Peloton. <laughs> 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 I would not have wanted to be one of those other riders. I'm like, who's this asshole? <laughs> like fucking blasting it out. Well, I get, you know, um... you're, you're like, um, uh, you're fairly competitive. And that was when I did, when I, I did Peloton three times, yeah. And when I did it, I was like, oh, there's a leaderboard. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could be in the top X percent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Let me see, you know, yeah. how far I could go. Like, is that... Did yeah, you... there's definitely a gamification to it, similar to like how you guys keep the scores for people and write them on the board, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is motivating for somebody like me. It's like the type A and like competitive, but doesn't compete. And so yeah, it was like, it's like fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I uh, What I was always curious about, because I only did it three times, I was staying at a hotel that had it. What I was curious about is like, how long does that last until you get tired of it? Like, I don't know. Um, for me, like I enjoyed it for a while. Like we did it for like a year or two and I've been going at it, but it wasn't running for me and yeah, it didn't help me at all with like my running and like my hip alignment and my hip issues. Right. I mean, it helped right. me like stay in shape, but I found that like when I would go out for a jog, I wasn't limited by my cardiovascular system. I was limited by like my limbs and my right. flexibility and stuff. So Right. So it was just focused on like a narrow. Yeah. Thing. It wasn't so much that I got bored with Peloton. It was just Peloton for me was like something to hold it together. And it's, it, it's a good tool, but it, I think doing it only that is kind of limiting. So what was your goal when you started? Here? Yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> so like I've had this hip pain forever, mm. right? And I'm like, okay, so if I'm going to go do this and I'm going to hire a personal trainer, like they can fix my hip and like they can make me like run again without pain. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure like my bench press will get a little stronger over time, like yada, yada, whatever. But like what I really wanted was like somebody to like fix all my problems that I had and didn't know I had. Mm. Um, and this thing had been bothering me I remember this vividly. It's been bothering me since the birth of our first kid because I'm 6'2". And when we had our first kid, the husband sleeps on a bench adjacent to the wife. <laughs> and for three or four days, I sat in this bed that measured six feet. Oh, at the hospital? Yeah. And yeah. It was like a plank oh, of wood. Like a, yeah, a padded I, plank I remember of wood. that. Oh. And um, <laughs> between sleeping on that for four days and like bending over the crib back and forth, Yeah. Um, I got like this hip pain that never recovered for like four years and like <laughs> didn't really research anything about it, uh, but I knew when I ran it hurt. And so I'd like run, then it would take a week off, then it would run and take a week off. And I would just be like, oh, yeah. So I'm like, all right, like I'll have somebody curate my recovery experience and like, let's, let's see how that works. <laughs> Man, you walked away from not even the one giving birth. Uh, with a with a kind of a permanent like hip issue. It, 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 if you know, you know. Like these benches are bad. <laughs> They're bad. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's a thing. It's They're like really a meme bad. On. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, <laughs> well, I only had to fortunately stay there for one night, but yeah. I do remember uh, they would come in like it seemed like every fifteen minutes yeah. asking some question or oh, like yeah. trying to give you food or whatever. And I remember one time they woke me up and they were like, "Do you, you know? Do you want to get a vasectomy?" And I'm just like, it's 2.30 in the morning. Like, like yeah. let's talk about this later. Oh, my God. <laughs> to be clear, my wife's experience was a lot harder than mine. Yeah. Like, way harder. <laughs> if you were there for four days, yeah. But, yeah, it didn't do me any favors, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay, so you had this hip issue, and that was, like, the main thing. Were there any other goals that you had when you started? Yes. Yes. Well, like... So <laughs> what, were, what were his goals? Do you remember well, them? I mean, I remember distinctly. <laughs> this guy comes in, and he's like... I want to be the best eight week client you've ever had. <laughs> I want to make the most progress of anyone you've ever seen. I'm like, who is this? <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> sounds, sounds accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's what I remember. Um, 
And like you had the the main goal that I remember too when you started was the pull up. Like to you, that was such a pinnacle of fitness of like, yeah. I want to be able to jump up and do strict pull ups. Yeah. Um, and we tested it on day one or day two or whatever yeah. it was, and it was cute. <laughs> it was like <laughs> three quarter pull up. We'll call it three quarter pull up. Yeah. 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 So With great, great, great effort. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of grunting. Ah! <laughs> so, <laughs> so getting a pull up, right? Uh, being the best eight week athlete. What is that? What did that actually mean to you? I don't know. I think it was just like I was in denial about how out of shape I was. So I just wanted to like get back as quick as possible. Mm, yeah. Um, and that really has kind of held true for like my whole 10 months, I think. Yeah. 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 So that was like really what it was. Is I like I wanted to get myself back in shape relatively quickly. You know? Yeah. I was like tired of being out of shape and I wanted to get back at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what was that first day like? I remember the abs being the worst. I think I just like couldn't do them. It was like thirty or something. It was thirty sit ups. I think at like ten or twenty I was just like, uh I think I'm done with these. Yeah. <laughs> it was I can tell you exactly how long it took. It took ten minutes. Yeah. Ten and a half minutes and nine of those minutes was doing sit ups. Yeah, I remember it. It was bad. Um, uh, and I there's like things that you don't like doing and I never like doing like core work. My wife was like only will do core work for like two months. And for me, like I always like skipped the part of the workout that was core work. So that was the other reason I wanted to hire a coach because I knew they would make me do the things I don't want to do. And like core was one of my weaker areas for sure. Yeah. Do you have coaches in other areas of your life? No, none. This is the I'm only pretty, one. Pretty stubborn, yeah. So it took a lot for me to hire a coach in any yeah. area. Yeah. So normally when you approach something like this, you kind of figure it out on your own. Yeah. 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 And, and how do you usually go about doing that? Uh, research. Like, I, I've been on, like, bodybuilding.com forums since I was in college in, like, 2005. Yeah. Um, and, like, my fitness knowledge was pretty high. Uh, it got kind of outdated when I, like, stopped caring and didn't do it, but I probably could have created a routine for myself that would have been, like, developed, that would have developed my core, but yeah, I just didn't. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, this is, this is great. I mean, we're in an area where a lot of people approach things the same way, yeah. right? You know, near UC Berkeley, everyone's like kind of an academic. It's like, okay, yeah. I can figure this stuff out. And this is how I approach things as well. And it's sort of like, until you hire a coach, you don't recognize the sort of value. Yeah. And I mean, you're, you're a business owner as well. Yeah. Right. And yep. the amount of time that you would have to spend kind of creating your own program and figuring all that stuff out takes away from the time you'd spend on your business or with your family. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it's just trade offs. Right. Like, so I kind of ran. It took me a while to realize that, like, I ran out of runway to do, like, everything I wanted to do. Um, it was mostly kids. Pre kids, like, I could have figured out pretty much anything in any area I wanted and had the time for. But kids have the ability to like suck any excess time you have or <laughs> not even excess time, just any time you have, <laughs> just down to zero. Yeah. So energy yeah. and kind yeah, of motivation yeah. around that all stuff. of it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, that was it. Like it was like, okay, well it's not happening on its own. So let's, let's yeah. seek some help. Yeah. Yeah. So you came in, the sit-ups were kind of uh, <laughs> like, okay, this was, this yeah. was tough. Yeah. And I mean, after that first day, I'm guessing you were pretty sore. I think so. I'm pretty sure my stomach was pretty sore. I'm still sore every time I do sit-ups in this gym. <laughs> now it's like 100 sit-ups. But usually it takes about a week to recover from sit-ups. Right, right. Yeah. right. And so, but it sounds like after that first session, you were like, okay, I'm, I'm all in. I'm going to get as much progress as I can as fast as I can. I think so. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I don't remember, but like if I had to guess, that's, that's what, what happened. What happened. Yeah. Can't confirm. Yeah. <laughs> So what was, like, in those early days, what was the hardest thing for you? Like, you know, you got, you got a fitness program, a nutrition program, you know, recovery, your balance and uh, all this okay. stuff. What was the hardest for you? Um, nutrition is always the hardest for me. Mm. I'm like a chronic snacker. And I was really, into, like, really in denial about how, like, bad I ate. I, um, we logged my first couple weeks and it was like, oh, my God, I think I went out for pizza twice and ate it for leftovers three other nights. And I'm like, I'm like 80% pizza on this diet. <laughs> it's not good. It's five days a week. Um, yeah. I'm just like, wow. I mean, how am I not in worse shape than this? Like, that was like my huh. first realization. Um, 
Yeah, so I would say nutrition, hands down, was the hardest, is the hardest, continues to be the hardest. Yeah. I love, like, I have no problem, like, getting to the gym and, like, pushing as hard as I can. It's just the recovery, getting enough sleep, and eating the right foods that are continue to be difficult area, problem areas for me. Yeah. yeah. So you have you've have this, like, five-day-a-week pizza habit that you started with. Yeah. yeah. What What changes did you make? Um, I think I've heard you say protein first, like 95 times. <laughs> <laughs> I think I stopped joining the nutrition calls because I know you would just be like, protein first. That's the secret. <laughs> like whenever you sit down for your Christmas meal, just have the protein first. Like, okay, I got it. Now. Right, you got to hear it five, five more times. Yeah. Before you get it. Um, <laughs> so that's like the main thing that, I, and also I'm like a big person. So protein first for me is defined as like 200, 230 it's grams of protein. Yeah. So it's really just like writing down on a spreadsheet or paper, like how many like eggs, protein shakes, pieces of chicken or fish or whatever does it take to get that many grams of protein? Yeah. And then I kind of like fill in the rest around that. Um, that's been mostly where I've succeeded. And I try to stay roughly within the calorie range. And if I need 200 grams of protein and I have to like not completely blow my caloric budget, pizza just doesn't offer anything yeah yeah, yeah that's just tough carbs and fat but it's delicious so. yeah. <laughs> that's right yeah, yeah uh, so did was that like week two that you did that or was there like a, I, um, <laughs> like a s- steps to get there i would say i drastically reduced the pizza pretty quickly yeah i didn't realize like how bad it was to be honest like i <laughs> Yeah. I knew I ate a lot of pizza, but I didn't realize it was like that bad. Um, <laughs> How much pizza was he really eating? It was a lot of pizza. I mean, it was enough that we were looking through it and we're like, oh, okay, I see what's going on. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> what if we cut this down to three days a week, right? Like, could we get there? That'd be cool. Or like, there was a lot of, um, I, you actually do what a lot of people do, which is take a rather like meager approach to breakfast and lunch. You'd have a breakfast and then lunch would pretty much be like, protein chips and maybe a piece of fruit, something like that. So a lot of what we did early on was like, how can we, it was like lunch became one of our main focuses of like, let's, let's do something with this meal. Like how can we get a good whole food source of protein in? It was like tuna or we were doing sandwiches for a while. Um, That was kind of the first, first go. And then we started adding in vegetables. And what was really funny about that was that um, Matt's like, there's three vegetables that I like. (laughs) And it was mm-hmm. broccoli, green beans, and maybe there was one more. Potatoes, probably. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, great, we're going to eat a lot of broccoli then. Um, <laughs> and so we just started adding broccoli. And I remember I remember distinctly, and because what was so funny, too, was like he kept telling me, you know, oh, my, you know, Dan and my wife's been trying to get me to do this for so long. Yeah. Um, and um, and she's like really impressed. I'm like <laughs> eating vegetables. I'm eating protein. And then we kept going, and eventually it was like, I'm eating more protein and vegetables than anyone in my household. Like it evolved to that um, level. And that took a while, you know, that probably took us a few months to get there. But I just remember feeling like, ah, the switch has flipped when it was like you were adding that stuff on your own, Yeah. you know, and now the lunches that had become your default. Yeah. So I want to drill in on one thing, like breakfast and lunch were pretty meager and then you were eating like a big dinner. Why is it important to do breakfast and lunch? Like, what? Why did? How does that make a difference? Well, well I, I can answer. Yeah. That. Yeah. Well, if you need two hundred and thirty grams of protein, and you don't <laughs> eat any for breakfast or lunch, oh. your dinner just is like a painful, <laughs> awful experience. <laughs> or you're gonna spend like the whole evening drinking three or four protein shakes. Oh, and then yeah. So you <laughs> you basically have to. Um, I mean, that's the main reason why. Yeah, um, you just you just have to. I yeah. think there's probably also some like you should have some protein throughout different parts of the day too. Um, but yeah, I was in addition to eating pizza five days a week, I'm, I was having like cereal for breakfast every day. Like mm. for probably a decade, I just ate like cereal, and it was like not good cereal either. You know, like <laughs> cinnamon toast crunch yeah. for breakfast. So. Yeah, yeah. Grew up on that. <laughs> so making that change, like why? Because I've heard you recommend that to other folks as well, Katie. Why, why is that important for you? Yeah, I mean, for the reasons that Matt mentioned, but also Matt had goals of getting stronger. He was now, I mean, he went, he kind of went zero to 100. You know, when Matt started, he wanted to do a lot and he did want to get in shape fast. 
And, um, and I love people like that because I see myself in them. I always yeah. want to do a lot. And, um, and I remember thinking like, all right, well, I'm going to give them a lot and we'll see what happens. And a lot of people you do that with and you pare down real quick because they just, they don't do it. They realize they don't have the capacity for it. Maybe they do half of it. But Matt ate it. Like Matt would just do everything I told him to do. Mm. So, um, so, you know, part of the impetus was like, if you're, you're bumping up your work that much, like the only way to be able to keep that up is to recover. And so much of recovery is just having the nutrition to fuel the repair and to fuel the work. So, yeah. yeah. At, at what point, Matt, did you start seeing progress? Like, was there a movement or feeling or... Yeah, you know. so this is the part that is painful for me, but I'll say like in the last month. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so I will caveat that by saying there was progress, but maybe you didn't see it. Yeah, I mean like, <laughs> yes, there there is progress. I see these papers and numbers are going up on and down in certain areas on them. But yeah. like the first time like I could like see it in the mirror and like feel it during workouts was mm. like pretty recently. Mm. And w- one of the things I'm talking about is like moving a barbell, for instance. Yeah. Like, because of, I guess, mostly mobility, I couldn't do, like, a front rack. But mm. I've been doing, like, some version of front squats since I started. Yeah. yeah. But, like, just in the last month, they feel like somebody might look at it and say, like, oh, he's doing a front squat. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> right. Um, or, like, when I was doing, like, squat cleans or something like that, Katie was like, oh, wow, you can do those now. She was, like, surprised. And I was like... Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that that has been like pretty recent um, yeah. that I've like finally felt that I've made some yeah. some progress. Yeah. Um, That's tough. How do you stick with something if you feel like you're not making progress for nine months? I honestly don't know. That was one of the most <laughs> frustrating things. Um, because, I mean, I see a lot of other people making progress and a lot of people would just say like, you know, consistency is key i've been doing this for 10 years or nine years and you're like oh my god nine to go like is that what it's gonna take <laughs> um but i know like if i get off the wagon it's gonna take me that much longer to get back on so yeah what was um, your measure of progress um i mean like we body fat is a big one okay. um i guess there's like three right like the strength measures um body fat for me and then like speed so like i'm pretty interested in getting because i was a runner I know like what a fast run is. So I'm pretty interested in getting back to some of the condition I've been in before. So those are, I guess those are the three ways that I measure. Um, so for you, it had a lot more to do with like getting back to some semblance of what you were doing before. And then yeah. it's like, okay, great. I feel like I'm getting sort of back to that. Now I want to make progress from there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I know there's a lot of like psychology there and like anchoring is bad. I'm older than I used to be. I shouldn't do that, but like, eh. <laughs> I'm doing it. I mean, <laughs> I've done it before. I want to do it again. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you can dig into all the whys and all that kind of stuff, but the fact is you're still showing up. Yeah. And if you show up long enough, you will see the progress you want to see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, I mean, we have a whole sheet, like you said, of, you know, all the things that have improved since you started. Yeah. I think in, the, I, I would guess that based on what you said, like if I stop now, then I'll, you know, it's going to. I'm going to have to redo it all over again. Yeah. Sure. I, w- I would guess you kind of felt that at some point during yeah. the thing. It's like, okay, I'm not anywhere close to where I want to be, but I'm better than I was when I started. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of that. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's, it's so much more gradual than I thought um, it would be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is amazing. And like, I love this because like, that's the reality for a lot of people. Yeah. And it's always amazing for me to hear you say it too, because like when you compare your progress to a lot of people's progress, it's actually been very, very fast. I mean, you've put over a hundred pounds on your back squat, 125 pounds in your back squat. You've put over a hundred pounds on your bench press. That's a lot. Yeah. You've put over a hundred pounds on your deadlift. Like that's less than a year yeah. to do all of that. So like... That's a lot of progress. Um, but you're, the reality and the perception is like on the day to day, you just don't see it. Yeah. You know, and I think that one of the things that we've worked on a lot and like you have credit where credit is due improved a lot is like I can ask you how you won this week and you actually have an answer. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, yeah. and a lot of people get lost there, which is like I don't see the big, you know, 
special shiny star thing that I have as a vision in my mind. And so therefore I can't be content with where I'm at. And it's like figuring out, and you have done a great job of this, I think, which is like, well, what did go well this week? Well, yeah. actually there were a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. I try to be, I try to do both. Right. I yeah. can't be too easy on myself. Right. right. Yeah. Um, I need to like still improve on a lot of things, but I do have, I do enjoy certain workouts and do, I celebrate the victories. Too. Yeah. yeah. I like to think about this as like, there's a difference between the standards and progress. Yeah. Right. It's like, it sounds like what you had was like, this is a standard that I want to be able to achieve. Yeah. Right. It's like what I've been, what I used to be able to do, you know, or some percentage of what I used to be able to do. And then there's, you know, that's, that's sort of here. <laughs> and then maybe you're starting here and it's like, you see progress all the way up to the standard but until you get to the standard, it's like you're not going to be satisfied. Yeah, that's right. True. And then what happens when you get to the standard? You set a higher standard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and it's it's an interesting like dichotomy that, as a business owner, you kind of get used to this. Right. You're just like, this is the standard. We're going to hit this standard, and it doesn't matter that we did so much better than we did last time. If we don't hit the standard, then I'm not happy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, it's something that you have to wrestle with because you're holding these sort of two like these two competing like opinions, right? It's like you do want the standard. You also want to celebrate progress because otherwise like you're just miserable all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you have a whole list of things. I want to kind of run through some of this stuff okay. here. Let's hear it. Yeah. All right. So, um, so when you started, let's see, you're going back to, is this right? Are these things? This is old and this is new. Oh, okay. The dates are funky. All right, cool. So your body weight went down, went from... No, that's not right. What's going oh, on? Oh, you're right. You're right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Okay. So, yeah. So, oh, yeah. This has 120. It was the day we first did this. Anyway, that's fine. Um, yeah. So body fat percent down from 23 when you started down to 16. Yeah. That's pretty cool. 23 is a big number. Yeah. Your skeletal muscle, do you want to guess how much muscle you've put on? 18. Yeah. 15. 15. F That's fair. 15 pounds of muscle. That's 15% increase. That's beginner muscle. It always is a lot, right? I mean, you weren't starting from nothing. <laughs> yeah. Your visceral fat down level has gone down by two. Two. That's the one in your organs. Yeah. That's solid. Yeah. Um, your lean body mass... Holy shit, dude. I know, right? Your lean body mass went but went up by 24 pounds. 24 pounds? Yeah. In lean body mass? That's yeah, crazy, that's cool. man. <laughs> 190 pounds of lean body mass yeah, from that's 166. Solid. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, down... And this is from the last scan on the Matt, 27th. I think that might be the highest that we have. <laughs> like 190 pounds. Like, that's a that's like I'm about 190 pounds lean body mass, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yeah, I don't think we've seen too much higher than that. And to go from 166 yeah. to get there, that's like... Yeah, that's crazy. That's that's crazy. Yeah. And meanwhile, you've lost fat and... Yeah, 11 pounds of fat. Yeah, you've decreased your your risk of disease. Like, that's pretty amazing. Did you did you know what that... Do you know the visceral fat? Have you ever gone through that? We've talked about it a little bit. It's yeah. Like the, Inner, inner fat or the intracellular fat or something. Yeah, the fat around your organs, yeah. basically. Like, the more of that there is, the more likely you are at risk for, like, cardiovascular disease. And that has gone down while your muscle has gone up. Um, all right, so we got... Yeah, that also means that you can actually eat more food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm, I do track the BMR increases. That's, mm -hmm. that's something that's very exciting for me. Is to see that uh, from 2,000 to Yeah, increased by... 240 calories a day. That's Not cool. bad. That's a lot of extra food. You can yeah. Eat. That is a lot of extra food. Yeah, that's crazy. That's great. So did you get that pull-up? Uh, <laughs> did you get pull-ups, Matt? I did get pull-ups again. Yes. yes. You, you got the, you got the pull-up. There's a bunch of other stats here. We've got, like you, like you were saying earlier, back squat gone up by 120, bench press 105, deadlift 115. Matt, are you sure you're not on 
Any kind of like performance <laughs> enhancing drugs? I was on creatine for a couple months. <laughs> but I'm not that great at drinking water, so I cycle <laughs> off of it periodically. Yeah. Mm. Dude, how old are you, Matt? 37. 37 years old. At 37 years old, you are able to put on 24 pounds of lean body mass in less than a year? Like, <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> Have you ever considered being like a bodybuilder or anything? Is that actually insane, though? That, that is that insane, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's more than just beginner, like, yeah. that, it's more than just beginner gains. Okay. Right? That I, is, well, I believe you, yeah. That is actually insane. I don't have, like, a reference, right? Like, I don't know, mm -hmm. like, what is an average 37-year-old uh, I mean, do? yeah, anyone here would pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to be able to put on 24 pounds. You would pay that. Oh, my God. <laughs> to, to even put on half yeah. of that in yeah. two years. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's a that's a tremendous increase. Yeah. Cool. So no wonder you've gotten so much stronger. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of other stuff. Clean, snatch, a snick, strict press. Like, you put on that much muscle, all that stuff is going to improve. Yeah. I mean, even, like, the cardio numbers are amazing, too. We, you know, we tested your mile. It was just under seven minutes the first time we tested it. And the last oh, really? time we did it, yeah. Um, yeah. And then the last time we did it, you had taken basically a full minute off of that, finished in 6.03. A 6.03 mile, which is very, very fast. Yeah. Very fast. That's, like, a... That's very fast. How much do you weigh? 230. Yeah. So at 230 pounds, a six-minute mile, that's pretty tremendous that's pretty good yeah yeah we could calculate <laughs> yeah. the amount of force force is mass times acceleration like that's um that's a serious force yeah 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 and you're running a 115 400 meters you did that 5k in uh what 2146 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. with hills <laughs> yeah that's is that yeah is that right 800 meter run at one did you run 800 meters in 154 uh that sounds about right yes wait yeah, it was a sub two minute eight hundred meter. Yes. No. Is that right? I don't yeah. Think no, right. I don't think so. We did it in right. class. I, yeah. I don't think is so. Right? Oh, I could I, be wrong. I could no. be wrong. Not if you're running one fifteen four hundred. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. That's <laughs> that's um, older though. Oh yeah. yeah that's my, true. my high school PR for the eight hundred is one fifty four actually. Oh, okay. That might maybe, be an maybe. old like reference. Maybe that's what we put on there. <laughs> that could be what we did. We gotta erase that. Yeah, yeah. That's retest. Retest. Yeah. Yeah. But I think too, and like, you know, one of the things that I find so interesting about Matt, we were just talking about this the other day, is like, this is, I would call it like uh, an unusual amount of progress even to make in under a year. Yeah. Um, and also though, like Matt has chosen to de dedicate a significant amount of his time and energy to this process. For someone who has two young kids, what they're two and four. Yeah. Yeah, two young kids, um, owns his own business, like has made the deliberate choice to basically spend two hours of his day here. I would say that's about accurate five days out of the week. Yeah. And then sometimes weekends. Um, yeah, weekends usually running now. Yeah. We've, we've, we've done a couple different things on the weekends, but it's usually running mm -hmm. with family or sort of with kids and a jogging stroller of some capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of take your rest days on the weekends and you know, active recovery with the running. Yeah. It's hard to call it rest because it's like full-time kid management. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I would say it's harder. It's more tiring, but yeah. Resting from the gym. Not lifting weights. Anyway. Not lifting weights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Not more than like 40 pounds or so of yeah. kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But just to like prioritize your life that way. And not everyone has like the desire to do that. Um, but that is no small feat at all. And we were even talking about, you know, you do financial planning. Is that what you would call it? Yep. Um, for people. And you've talked to me about like the people who seem the happiest, you know, it's not always the people who take the promotions and, you know, put their career first. Yep. And it has been a deliberate choice for you. We were even talking about this the other day of like, I'm actually putting growth of my business on hold right now. Like that's not my priority because I'm going to focus on my kids, my family and my own health, mm. which is just like, I, it just blows my mind because it's a choice that I think so many people in their, you know, dream of making and so few people do. Yeah. So yeah. I'm always curious about like, wow, what an interesting decision to make. Yeah. It was a, it was a deliberate decision too. Well, like, my long-term career track was deliberate. Um, so I was a consultant for about a decade. Um, 
and progressed and got promotions and worked harder and harder. And I found that like the stress like tripled and the money went up like 15%. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, wow, Mm -hmm. this is really, really not worth it. Um, Some of the happier people that I worked with were the people that like didn't take the the, the manager promotion, right? That would stay and kind of in their role and and do a good job. Um, They weren't up early on the calls. They weren't the the neck to choke, so to speak, when something went wrong. (laughs) Um, And they did just as good pretty much financially, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so that was when I initially decided to launch my business, it was the decision that my wife and I had come, reached together, um, that when we had kids, I would stop traveling for work mm-hmm. and I can't really be a, well, maybe this was pre COVID. You couldn't really be a consultant and not travel. Yeah. You probably can now actually because of COVID, but, mm-hmm. um, we made that decision. So I, I basically started my passion project of launching my own business seven years ago now mm-hmm. and then I've grown it slowly since and then when I joined the gym I basically said you know we're going to stop growing the business I'm not shutting it down I'm still going to do the work but I'm going to change my priorities to be instead of growth to you know focus on my personal growth myself hmm. yeah. yeah how has this impacted your life outside of the gym good for the better <laughs> yeah it's been good <laughs> Yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> what impact has it had on your business and, you know, time with your family, that kind of thing? Um, it's caused me to be a little bit of a better prioritizer. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like there's been like two different levels of like scheduling prioritization. Like pre-kids, it just, you could do whatever you want, whenever you want, nothing mattered. <laughs> then when we had kids, it was like, okay, if I need to like repair the fence, I got to like find time to do that. And now it's like, I have to find time for every little thing and like add it to my schedule. Um, so it's been even more important to be intentional about my schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I've like really, really had to focus on that. Um, yeah. but have as much free time as I would like, um, if any these days, but, um, yeah. Yeah. How do you feel on a day to day basis? A little more tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So not better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> so has it had, yeah. has it had any positive impact on your life outside of the gym? Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely like happier, I'm springier and, um, you know, I'm more physically capable and less like grony and I have a much easier time getting around now, but yeah. I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't in really bad shape when I came in. Um, so yeah, I would say it's made me happier as a person. Um, I feel a little bit more capable. Yeah. Um, but I work out pretty hard, so I would say overall I'm more tired <laughs> and lethargic when I'm not in the gym. Yeah. 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 Do you feel like people would need to work out two hours a day to to get results like this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I could I should and could be doing even more if I wanted to get where I wanted to get. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But I'm like pretty much at the line of where like I can recover my body, which is I think is something you said. Like it's it's not so much about like how much can you work it out. It's can you recover in time for the next one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think I'm kind of I'm towing that line yeah. right now. Yeah. You can feel where you start to get yeah. a little bit bogged down. Yeah. 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 And so tell me a little, we talked a little bit about nutrition, but right now you're basically tracking everything you're eating. Um, yeah. I go like, I do a week like on, week off now, I think is probably the right cadence for me. Yeah. Um, Cause I know, I know basically when I hit my limit and if I've hit my protein or not, basically just from like having tracked enough to know like mm-hmm. if I'm going to be shorter over. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm not tracking this week. I tracked all last week. Um, and I, and I kind of go back and forth on it. Yeah. To just make sure that you're kind of yeah where you want to be. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So I'm, this has been sort of a 10 months we said, yeah. right? you've gotten to the point where like, okay, you're starting to feel like you used to feel. What's next for you? What are the, what are your goals now? I need to like be able to do all the CrossFit things hmm. still, still. You need to, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like handstand walk, bar muscle up, um, double unders, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's still some skills that you want to work on. Oh yeah. I need yeah. to get a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen when you are a lot better? Ah, good question. Probably nothing. I don't know. Like, I don't, I'm not particularly interested in, like, doing competitions or anything, but 
I don't know. I've told Katie that my joke is kind of like I can't be here for a year and like not be able to do CrossFit things. So, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah. And we're talking like big CrossFit uh, things. Yeah, I will say like it's funny. You're doing you know, a lot of CrossFit things. Um, it's funny because like now you know in in under a year's time you're at the place where you're basically learning the some of the most advanced movements that 95 percent of people who do CrossFit as a training method will not get to. You know. Some of them have no aspiration to get there. But even when you started, um, like, you know, we were doing push-ups, but, uh, but like handstands, even just like walking yourself into a handstand was n- a no-go. Yeah. Um, you know. I'd, ne- I'd never done that before. It was like a completely new movement to me. Yeah, yeah. totally new. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what the next year looks like for you because I think – you know, with this amount of progress, you're now at the point where like, okay, cool. I, I can do what I used to be able to do and maybe a little bit more. Yeah. What is my potential? That's like the, that's like the yeah, question. That's a good question. Yeah. Like I'm not really, really sure where my ultimate goal post is because realistically next year I'm 38. Like I'm not setting any deadlift records or being a strong man or anything. Right. Um, is it just being in good shape? Probably. Yeah, maybe I'll get the bug and join you guys at like the fitness competitions, but I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, a funny thing about strength is like, I mean, I'm stronger now than I was when I was 37 yeah. by a significant amount. Yeah, and it's just something that kind of takes time. Yeah, <laughs> and builds over time. Yeah. Now sure. you know probably couldn't jump as high or you know run as fast potentially, but it's not. You know, you'd be surprised at what like just continuing to do it over time actually does. Yeah, that's the hard part for me too is because like I want to be able to jump higher and run faster. And those are the hard ones. Those are the ones yeah. that I feel like time is really working against me extra. Um, Could be. <laughs> I, I know my bench press will get bigger if I keep doing it, right? My squats and my deadlift. Um, it's just the, can I get faster again? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you may not be able to beat 154, 800 meters. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's possible. It's possible. I yes. think it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, um, 400, 800 is a little, a little short, though. It's a, it's a short distance. The mile time is within, I think it's doable. We'll yeah. I mean, you start to get to longer distances, though. You can be faster as, yeah. you, as you get older, Definitely. right? 5K, 10K. You know, it's like some of the fastest times are posted by folks that are... Yeah, you know, the guy that ran second place in the 10 or the 5K was like 52 yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, so there's, again, there's like that time element of putting it in and like yeah. the training and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, you'd you be surprised that, you know, if you just focus on getting to your potential, you'd be surprised at how far you can go. Yeah. So, all right, so last question I have for you, unless you have any other ones. I have one more, but maybe we'll all ask right, the go same for one. It. Well, I'm just curious, like, what advice you would give to someone who's starting? And it's kind of like you. That was my question. Oh, that's kind of. <laughs> oh, that's kind of like me. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's hard for me to say, but be patient and trust the process. Mm. Keep mm. showing up. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. At oh. the same time, don't be patient and do everything you can. I mean, well, yeah, but like, <laughs> hold work, two things at once. <laughs> work, re- work really hard, right? But yeah. like, you have to understand that even if you work super hard, it is still going to take yeah. longer than you might think. Yeah. yeah. I also think that like the thing, one of the things that you do really well is you, you bring joy to every class that you're in um, and, and group that you're in. And you can just tell how much you also make being here fun. You make it fun Thank for you. yourself. You make it fun for other people. And, you know, when you ask the question, it's like, why do you keep coming back if you don't make progress? Like, if you would see Matt's face, like, <laughs> and just, like, how happy he is, like, ah, I'm doing these, like, runs and carrying the dumbbells, like, you would understand why he comes back. Like, um, you really do make it fun. That's yeah. true. Yeah, I, I definitely want to acknowledge that, you know, you not only make it fun, but you also bring the intensity. Like, you really focus. You're always trying to improve, always trying to get things right. And... You know, I can see sometimes where it's frustrating, but you just keep showing up and doing the thing. And I mean, a lot of people struggle with that. Like, yeah. you know, you, you come in and you try to do a pull up and you know, shit, I can't do a pull up. And a lot of people just run away from that. Oh, I'm not good at that. Yeah. But you kind of look at it and go, OK, well, I'm not good at that. So I'm going to put in work to get better at it yeah. until I become great at that. And then I can move on to something else. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I really admire that about you. Thank you.
Yeah, man. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you joining us today. Yeah, yeah. We got to let you get your workout in. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, we've got plenty of others. Go check out this one over here.